Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to dip dye yarn to create a variegated rainbow and I am so so excited! This has been something that has been requested for a really really long time and especially since I have done my color mixing videos. Before we dive on in, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to today's lab partner, Victoria. Victoria, thank you so much for being my Dye Pot Weekly lab partner today and supporting this episode. I really, really hope you're going to love the yarn that I create. Now, I don't know if we're going to be creating a perfect rainbow, but we will be using the Jacquard Bright Yellow, True Turquoise, and Hot Fuchsia to dip the yarn and layer it on that way. And I think that we could end up with something interesting, but a lot of this is going to need to be more by feel than by calculation. Because as I dip the yarn into a pot, it's going to have the most color where it goes in first, and then less and less and less and less. And it's in that transition area that we will get our secondary colors. So if I dip in yellow first, then in one of those transition areas, that's where we'll get our greens and that's where we'll get our orange. And so to an extent, it matters the amount of each color that I have in the dye pot, but it also matters the rate that I dip. And so we might end up having something that is more pink, red, yellow versus an orange, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> Today I'm going to dye 200 grams of Knit Pick Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. This yarn is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. I want to pre-soak the yarn so that way it can soak up the dye in the dye bath really, really easily. I am pre-soaking this in just some plain tap water for the first color, but after the first dip dye, there will be some acid in here because we need the acid for the colors to absorb, but I'm gonna let the first one go pretty slowly, I suppose. Uh, so I'm gonna soak this for 20 to 30 minutes. As I mentioned, today we are going to be playing with some 1% stock solutions of Jacquard Hot Fuchsia, True Turquoise, and Bright Yellow. And if you look back at my color mixing exercise with these colors, the blue is, I would say, a hair the most potent of the three colors, followed by the pink and then the yellow. Poor yellow. It's always last. Now, a 1% stock solution means that there is one gram of dye dissolved per 100 milliliters of our stock solution. And so the reason why there's different potencies is because one gram of dye for different colors might have different amounts of pigment, but even so, that amount of pigment by weight can be more or less intense. Think about a black acid dye being way, way, way more pigmented than a gray, if you have a 1% stock solution of both, then the black is going to be way more pigmented. So if I plan to dip dye with equal amounts of these dyes, we might not get a balanced rainbow, but it could be somewhat balanced based on how I am dipping and controlling the way that the colors are layering on each other in the pot. So if this is our yarn, and we start dip dyeing into yellow, so it'll be really concentrated at one end, and then get lighter, and lighter, and lighter. There will be, because I'm dip dyeing this end in first, there will be something somewhat even on both of these sides. So then when I rotate it to do, say, the pink, uh, and approximately like one third of the way around and the pink starts off heavy. The way that the pink is going to get lighter and lighter is going to be sort of in a very similar, similar position. Um, which means, oh, that's too heavy. So these aren't, these are colored pencils. They're not quite blending to an orange, but hopefully you're getting the picture. So then when I come into with the blue at the end, I can't make more blue layer onto the pink and less onto the yellow, for example, because as I'm dipping, since I'm going to be dipping these two areas at the same time, it will be similar. So how they blend, I have a control to an extent, but as I layer, 
say the blue onto the yellow and the pink, it's going to be at a similar rate. And so that's something that I will need to pay attention to and just try my best and we'll see what happens. We will get something rainbowy. How rainbow? Well, we'll see in the end. <laughs> I plan to have two pots set up to go at any given time. One with the color I'm dipping into, but then a second pot that's just a steamer basket because if I'm satisfied with the color when I'm dipping into a color, I'm going to stop. There's no reason why I have to use all of that color that I've mixed to make that go clear. I can then add the yarn into a steamer basket to set that color before moving on to the next one. The reason why I do want to make sure that a color is set before moving on is that if there is some unbound liquid soaked into that yarn that hasn't set yet, I don't want to say introduce pink into all of the blue so then I can't get a true blue at the end. So if I wanted to dip the entire skein into each color, this wouldn't be a problem, but I do want to leave some white after that first dip, for example. So we'll see how things shake out. Here in the dye pot, I have 16 cups of water and I am going to add, oh, I'm debating just three tablespoons of white vinegar. Oh wait, this is 16 cups of water. So, okay, four, five, six. So an equivalent of three per eight cups. I'm I know I want to start with the yellow. I'm not sure if I should do the pink or the blue next. Ooh, I'm a little nervous. Maybe I should do the pink last and do the blue next. Uh, yeah, we'll see. I think that each time, I am gonna do, I'm gonna estimate about 60 milliliters of dye. So by going about up here on my graduated cylinder, that will give us about approximately 0.9 grams of dye per 100 grams of yarn. But the total depth of shade in all the places is gonna vary just because we are dip dyeing. And I might not have everything perfectly in thirds because, well, <laughs> I'm dip dyeing. And so we're gonna do the best we can. We aren't hot yet, but I'm coming in with the yellow, about 60 milliliters, adding it in, and we'll let things heat up. I think it might be hard for me to remember that while we are dip dyeing, and it was boiling, I just reduced the temperature a little bit, but it's gonna be hard for me to remember that I don't need to go all the way. Then in fact, I don't not, it's not even that I don't need to go all the way, I don't want to go all the way. Uh, so that is going to be a little tricky for me. Not entirely sure how much, how far to go. If you can't tell, I have not exactly done this before. But you can also see that most of the color has absorbed to that one end. I've definitely gone over halfway, but the yellow is not the one to be worried about here because the other colors are more intense. So uh, that is where we will need to focus our attention a little bit more, but actually this is pretty good and almost completely absorbed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna go ahead and steam set the yarn this time. And I don't even think I need to use a yarn mop right now to use up any of that leftover color. I think that this is fine. But let's go lay this out and we'll look at this color. Actually, there might be a tiny hint of yellow. Here's a skein of just dry stroll that I am sticking in to soak up anything that's left. And yeah, it is barely, barely any color, but I'll just leave that in there while we look at the yellow and prepare for, I think blue, I think blue. Here's yellow and I would say that we've got bright color on about a third and then paler going up a bit. I feel like I don't want to dip as far in the next few colors, but we're going to try this out and we'll see what we end up with. It's cooling off pretty quickly because I did remove most of the water, but I'm going to let it sit for 
a minute or two so that way I can easily manipulate it. Meanwhile, I'm gonna remove this hint of yellow, like the barest, barest hint. I don't think it would have made a huge difference um, on that mop. And we're gonna add about 60 milliliters of our blue. I will go rinse this out. So now it's time for me to rearrange the yarn for the next dip, and I debated it a bit. So this is a lot more like how it was as we dipped that yellow in, and then I think that this is the way I want it to rotate, where I have a beginning of some of the white down at the bottom, and then some pale yellow at the top, and I'm really gonna try to keep some white located in here. I initially kept a little bit more of the yellow, or sorry, a little bit more of the white up by the zip tie, but then I realized that if I did that, then we might not get, it might be harder to keep some of this brightest yellow. So, let's go dip into the blue, and then maybe it'll be easier to figure out how we wanna do the pink, but let's try to keep some amount of pink left over. All right, let's dip into the blue, and we're gonna go relatively slowly ish <laughs> okay I'm trying harder to not go too far obviously I don't want that harsh line so I'm gonna want to go up a little higher but I'm gonna try to do it slowly oh dear I probably could have added less blue and then been okay. The good news is that we're seeing teals and greens, so that is good. The question is though, how blended might it feel? Because I'm about as far I really want to go but actually I can have my mop help me a little bit but actually that's pretty pastel okay so that's not bad there's not a lot of white left for the pink though um, so what I'm gonna do now is come in with my mop to help me out um, and then that's gonna remove some of the blue, so then I can go in here and get just a hint more, okay, of our blue. And then I'm gonna remove this. The water is mostly clear, but I'm gonna stick it in the steamer basket for, oh gosh, not very long. And while that's there, yeah, there's actually still a fair amount of blue left, so we're gonna need to like wait for this color to all absorb onto this mop anyway. So it's probably pretty good that I've got this steamer basket set up here. Um, I don't really want transfer of the blue onto the yellow, but I guess whatever happens, happens. It could happen. I'm gonna leave the yarn in here to steam for just about 10 minutes. Uh, as we wait for the, the dye bath blues to clear anyway, uh, so then we can go on to the pink color. I'm thinking, right now, I think if I were to do this again, I would probably start with a similar amount of yellow just to get that in there, and then maybe I would have reduced the amount of blue that I added just so that way I could start with a little bit of color. And then actually I could have added more blue into the pot itself to then dip again and again, building up that blue, but not getting the intense color going too high up on the yarn. Uh, I'm gonna do the pink the same way I did the blue, so I'm not going to shift <laughs> today, but that could be a way to get some more soft transitions. It's if you start low and build the color up slowly versus start super concentrated and then potentially get a demarcation line where you can tell you dipped into one color. Not that the demarcation is a bad thing <laughs> at all, because it's not. So, I'll be back when it's time to look at the yarn. All right, it's been 10 minutes. 
and I am going to remove this and set it aside so it can cool. And oh, shoot, there was a little bit of some color transfer over here. Uh, can you see it? I'll let it cool and then I'll show you. We did get a little bit of color transfer in the pan, um, but bummer. Bummer. Okay, let me show you the little bit of color transfer that we got up there. You can, it's in person, it shows up a lot more than what it's showing up on camera. But what this means is that the color wasn't all completely set here in the yarn. It seems to be now. Um, so it means that it was a good thing that I decided to steam it um, versus hold it all together. But I probably should have just left that yellow port part hanging out of the pot like my instinct sort of said, so eh, we learn. And this has been in here for that same 10 minutes. There might be a hint, a bare hint of some blue left, but most of it is in this mop. And so we will go ahead and proceed with the pink after we are ready to go and the yarn has cooled a little bit. Can you see it from here? Kind of. It goes to show that even I make mistakes and yeah, we just have some little bits because there was probably some that wasn't absorbed. But, you know, it's okay. We will proceed with our third color. I'm very happy with where we are right now. So the goal, hopefully this one will be a little easier to set up. The goal now is to, I guess, center what white is left, which isn't a lot, oh dear, which isn't a lot, but, and then that's where we'll put the pink and hopefully preserve some of the blue and yellow. Actually, I'm gonna try to even up like the brightest blue across from the brightest yellow and, oh, it's okay if there's some differences between the skeins, but I think that this is where we will be for the last round of dip dyeing. Okay, I am coming in. It is pretty hot, but I want to add another eight cups of water with three tablespoons of white vinegar just to increase that volume of water. Once again, we're going to add approximately 60 milliliters of color. And I do have that yarn mop if I decide that I need to quickly remove some color. But now I just need to let things heat up. Okay, we are having movement on the surface. I have my yarn mop off camera in case it is needed. And we are going in for our final color. Very, very pink. The nice thing is we're getting nice purples right away, but we also definitely, definitely have our nice pink. And if I get the yarn stuck around, I am going really slow, which I always say I'm going to do, but then I never completely manage to do it. But I do want to be really careful. And when I go in a little further, really make that be just a little bit. So I'm definitely seeing uh, when we're introducing that yellow, we're getting more, it's red versus orange, but hopefully we will be able to get just some slight coverage so we feel the rainbow. I would say if you want a really, really good rainbow, the easiest way to do that is going to be uh, just painting your yarn uh, directly to get the rainbow that you want. This is not necessarily the easiest way to do that. And in fact, what I'm going to do now, and this slight skein is a little messed up, I don't, ooh, ooh, look at that color we got. I am adding it as a third, the mop as a third skein to dip. Uh, because I want a little bit less of some of that pink. And so it's just gonna help me soak up 
some of that color and then I have to think about how I'm going to move it aside and I guess I'll just hold it here and now we can go in a little bit more there we go to sort of blend things up and I'll just do that one more time and I'm going to leave this sitting out of the pot for a moment actually same over here but you can maybe see that now okay on one of them we have a little less yellow and one of them I was able to keep the yellow uh, but huh, this is definitely something doing this and controlling it is e something that would be way 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 easier to do with say um, this is something that would be really a lot easier to do with 100 grams versus 200 grams of yarn okay I am now going to remove the main colorway from here and I'm going to set it aside carefully that is so pretty okay and coming up with our mop see I kind of want to keep that last little bit of blue we're really really channeling some broken violet here uh, but just with acid dyes and slightly different colors and ooh we've got some areas that are more pink for sure this is really pretty um, let me see what happens it's gonna shift it more eh, it's a mop goodbye more blue it'll still be a little more blue than the rest but uh, the average of all my colors tends to be pink and purple. Ooh, that's really pretty, actually. That's really, really pretty. Okay, I'm going to leave this here in the pot, and I'm going to, for good measure, add one, two, three more tablespoons of white vinegar. And now let's look at our rainbow. I mean, I see a lot of colors here. This is great. There's a chance we might still get some color transfer, but let's go put this in the steamer basket, but I do see true orange. Eh, maybe we lost a little bit of the yellow, but pink and purple and greens, beautiful. Victoria, I'm hoping we don't get any more color transfer. I'm gonna go ahead and steam this in here for 20 minutes and then let it cool off really, really slowly. And then once it's cool, we can wash it. I am really excited with how this turned out. As I said, I think when I mixed all the rainbow colors and then painted it onto the yarn, even though that was still in a pan, I think that was easier than what I am doing here just because of the control over the different colors. And I had a lot more guesswork of, okay, I think I want to dip it here, and then I accidentally covered up a lot of the yellow on one of the skeins maybe. So we'll see how everything does turn out, but I think that if I were to do this again, as I mentioned, I would start with a lot of yellow and then with the blue and the pink, I would have a little in there dip until that was mostly gone, then add more dye and do that in a slower, more iterative process. It wouldn't add a ton more time, but it would give me more control over that amount of blue that I was adding because it's hard when you know that most of the colors are gonna go where you first dip, and so you wanna get some higher up, but not too much. And so it's a balance, but so fun, and I love what we created. This is the big reason why I left pink for last. There is still some pink in the pot. I'm gonna turn off the heat on our mop and let it cool completely here in the pot, and it should all absorb. Meanwhile, on the steamy yarn, I am curious if I am seeing some red transfer right there. I wonder what makes it have that type of patterning to it. I don't really know. But what I'm gonna do now is turn off the heat and leave things in here to cool completely. And I just put the lid back on. It's gonna cool. I wanted to slow down the cooling a little bit. But once it's completely cool, we can wash it. 
here's my hypothesis for how that color transfer is happening. If I have some yarn strands that have a little bit of extra color in them, and have some other yarn laying on top of it, it's not gonna give like a smooth, even coverage of transfer. If the yarn is sort of aligned this way, then you can see we might get some sort of speckled splotches of transfer. So that comes about just if there is colored liquid in the yarn. So there's a few ways I can think of to combat this. One would be wrapping the yarn, only putting the part I care about in the steamer basket. Uh, another option would be instead of a steamer basket to dip it into a pot of water with vinegar and leave part out. Uh, another option even would be to give it time and let it cool because in that time of cooling there is time for the, with the heat in the yarn for that color to absorb and so then maybe there wouldn't be transfer in the steamer basket but this is not something that i've tried a lot going straight from a dip dyeing pot to a steamer basket uh, and i'll have to explore different ways to troubleshoot and combat this and it's all really really fun so i hope that you guys are enjoying being part of the journey and now let's go wash our cold off yarn it is the next morning and the water is completely cool and there is no color in our dye bath at all so let's go wash all of the yarn why do you want to make sure that yarn is completely cool before you wash it and i know that there's some tangles in here um, I will be able to order it and fix it once uh, I will be able to order it and fix it once uh, everything is dry. But the reason why you want to make sure everything is cold completely anyway, and this is more important with non superwash yarn, but if you have fibers that are warm, the fibers relax and sort of spread out a little bit, and then if you cool it off really fast, they can shrink and felt. But if you let the yarn cool off slowly without it having been moved very much, the fibers can come back together in a more ordered way. So if you want to felt something, a thing I like to do is go from hot to cold a lot. Let's see. Okay, I'm seeing some pink. I don't think that's from our yarn knot. If it was going to be from somewhere, I would think it's from our rainbow. But that's really not that much color. So I'm not very upset, but we will do our best to rinse it out. I just added some dish soap and my tongs are in the sink. So let's see. Yeah, that's not looking bad at all. All right, I'm gonna rinse this a few times and then I will come back and check in and let you know if we need to do anything to mitigate that little bit of color coming out. But that's barely anything given how much color we've got. Two rinses later and I am not seeing any more color coming out. Wahoo! So now I'm gonna go put all this yarn through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. Oh, Victoria, this yarn came out beautiful. I think that the blue and pink definitely still overwhelmed the yellow a little bit, but I also dipped a little high. So in one of the skeins, we still do have some brightness of the yellow, and that does pair well with the pink and the blue. In the other, we do still have some more yellow, but it is a little bit more orange. The one thing that I am a little bit bummed about is the color transfer. Since I removed the yarn from the dye pot without exhausting the dye in there, there was some dye, some liquid with dye in the yarn that hadn't absorbed completely. And I believe that that is the reason why in some of these cases we see just some color transfer here just from the yarn touching itself. Now, how could I mitigate this? The big thing to do would be to wrap the yarn in plastic wrap or something before steam setting so that way the different colors weren't touching each other. And so to treat this more like I was hand painting the yarn, 
them like I was dip dyeing, since I didn't give it all the time needed for the colors to completely set. And so I think, well, this is a good learning experience and something that I will adapt moving forward. And one thing that I really like about these videos is that I, yes, they're tutorials, but also I'm filming things as I explore and try to new techniques, which means sometimes there's some mistakes. And in exploring those and sharing those, we can all learn to help get the colors that we want moving forward. Mistakes aside, this is a stunning, stunning, stunning colorway. Our yarn mop is a beautiful tonal with bits of pink and blue that sort of very, very subtly over the course of this purple, it's a little too intense to be lavender, but purple colorway. I forget if there was some yellow that went into this or not, but it is soft and pretty and sort of a fun counterpart to our bright rainbows. One last thing I want to point out before I sign off is that these two skeins are the same colorway. Granted, this one had a tiny bit more yellow, but you know, in the way that it's twisted, you don't really see the purple in here and you see more of the purple and other colors in this one. So the way yarn it's twisted can make it look sufficiently different. And so if you are going to be listing yarn with multiple skeins in a dye lot, could be worth twisting them up in different ways uh, or showing multiple twisted in a very similar way together just to help people get a sense of the colors. Victoria, thank you so much for being my lab partner and supporting this video. I really hope that everyone enjoyed watching me try to create this more balanced rainbow starting with various proportions of these three colors based on what we learned with our triangle. It is, I think, a little bit easier to try to create a balanced rainbow when you're gonna mix the amount of color versus dip and try to you know, manually, in real time, control the amount of color that's going on different parts of the yarn. But this was so much fun, and I really hope that came through. Please subscribe, press the bell, and make sure your notifications are on so you never miss a new video. I publish videos at least twice a week on Tuesday and Friday mornings, and you don't want to miss any of it. We're just at the beginning of 2021, and I know that I have more color mixing triangles I want to do, and more color mixing videos in general. And I really hope that you're enjoying watching me learn and play and experiment with different techniques to apply color to yarn. Thank you so much for watching.